Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another news update. So I've got a quick one here in this video. A couple of things I wasn't able to get to in my previous update a couple of days ago because this stuff just came out pretty much as I was uploading that video as well as of course a day afterwards. So the first thing to talk about is the PlayStation Portal hack. We finally have the POC that has been released, a proof of concept for this hack and we know a little bit more about it now. So this is a stack buffer overflow in the HEVC decoder. So it says here, summary, the HEVC decoder used in PlayStation Portal's remote play does not validate the length of elements copied to an array. This results in an out of bounds write on the stack and may lead to an RCE. In addition to this buffer overflow, gaps in PlayStation Portal's patching were identified to be vulnerable to another CVE. So in terms of severity, moderate severity, a user who is able to execute this buffer overflow can modify the PlayStation Portal to run arbitrary code. This affects the PlayStation Portal and all other remote play clients, iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac OS. So I'm sure it's probably been patched out in those remote play clients for those various operating systems by now, but the PlayStation Portal was patched a while ago. So it was patched uh, in version 2.06. So if you are on version 2.06 on your PlayStation Portal, you will not be able to take advantage of this. I did show in my previous video on the PlayStation Portal hack how you could avoid updating to 2.06 and continue to use your PlayStation Portal on the unpatched version 2.05. So as long as you're on that version 2.05 or lower, you'll be able to take advantage of this. It is just a proof of concept that's been released right now. We don't have the entire uh, exploit, so it looks like it's just the buffer overflow but this also needs to be, you know, taken further to the point where it can actually execute arbitrary code and do some of the things that we've seen the flow demonstrate with this hack, like being able to run other emulators natively on the device. So that is what we're hoping for with the PlayStation Portal hack here. So either the flow will release the full thing or some other hacker will take this proof of concept and take it to the next stage to be able to execute arbitrary code and perhaps get other emulators and stuff running natively on the PlayStation Portal. So that's what we're hoping for there. But we finally have the proof of concept released for the PlayStation Portal hack. So the other thing I wanted to get to here is with the PlayStation 4, Lightning Mods released a new version of Items Flow, version 1.05 for the PS4. And this version adds the ability to install your retail game updates. Now this is a feature that we've been long wanting to return after we lost the patch installer homebrew app from 0x199 which is still available to download on Orbis patches but it doesn't work anymore. Uh, it's never been fixed so it used to be a handy homebrew app that you could use to install any older retail game updates because a lot of the time the latest game updates cannot be installed on an older firmware, a jailbreakable firmware, they require something new. So you take something like Grand Theft Auto 5, which currently 1.49 is the latest update, which requires, I think, 11.02 firmware. And because our jailbreak is 11.0 firmware, it will not install and allow us to run that update without updating the firmware to 11.02 or higher. So therefore, we need to install an older update on these retail games so that we can run them on 11.0 or whatever our jailbreakable firmware is. So previously, as I showed in my how to install retail game updates video, the manual method is a lot more complicated. You have to actually go on a site like Orbis Patches, find an update that is compatible with your firmware, download all of the update parts using a download manager, and then merge them into one file, and then copy them over to a USB or something and install it with the Gold Hen package installer. So you have to go through all of that just to install an older update. So with Lightning Mod's new update for Items Flow, this is all built in just like the old patch installer homebrew. So you can just go on Items Flow, select your retail game, and then go over to the retail updates option. And then it will then give you uh, the latest updates will show up in there. And then you can use the D-pad left and right on the D-pad to switch between older updates. So you can then switch down to an update that is compatible with your firmware, like for Grand Theft Auto 5, for example, 1.48 is compatible with 11.0, but 1.49 requires 11.02. So I can just select 1.48 instead of 1.49, select it, and then Item Slow will automatically start downloading that. It will add it to your downloads, and it's now downloading an update that will work with your firmware version. And all you have to do is wait for that update to be installed, 
And once it's installed, you'll see that, uh, yeah, it's all working. It's installed successfully. It's updated the game to version 1.48. So this is a huge improvement over the manual method. It's still not quite as good as the patch installer app uh, used to be because the one thing it doesn't do right now is that it doesn't tell you if that game update is compatible with your firmware or not. The old patch installer homebrew app actually had green and red icons and the red icons were patches that could not be installed on your firmware version because it requires a higher firmware. And then the green ones were game updates that could be installed on your firmware version Currently, Items Flow 1.05 at least does not have that feature, so you'll still have to look up the update yourself manually to make sure that it is compatible with your firmware before you try to install it. So that's the only downside right now with the Items Flow method of installing retail game updates, but apart from that, it's definitely a lot better than the manual method. So that is a big improvement that's been added there with Items Flow. There's been a couple of other fixes that have been included. One of the things is that the dumper, when you're dumping your games, it will now ask you if you want to generate the GP4 file. In previous versions, it would just automatically generate the GP4 project file, which you could then load into Orbis PubGen in order to generate uh, your fake package file. This time it will actually ask you. And the reason for that is that some games have lots of small files and it can take a really long time to generate the GP4 file. Most games it only takes a few seconds to generate the GP4 file, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Take something like GTA 5, doesn't take long at all because there's only really a few really large files for GTA 5 because they're all packed into these RPF files. So it doesn't take long to generate the GP4. But with a game like, you say, Bloodborne, which has thousands of small files uh, that are dumped, then generating the GP4 file for all of those small files takes a really long time. It can actually take longer than it takes to dump the game files just to generate the GP4 file on the PS4. So because of that, Lightning Mods has added the option for you to say yes or no on generating the GP4. So games that have thousands of files where it's going to take a really long time, you can just say no, I don't want to generate the GP4 file and you can just generate it on your computer using Gen GP4. So that is another handy feature that's been added. In addition to that, it also fixes a couple of other issues. Fixed dumping patches from external storage. Um, so yeah, apparently if you're dumping patches from external storage, that wasn't working before. Hadn't tested that out myself, but apparently that was broken. So that should be fixed now. And also Fuse NFS support for 11.0. So that is the NFS share feature, which is very handy in item slow. I do have a separate video that shows you how to set that up. I'll leave it linked in the cards and down in the video description. Now there have been a number of bugs reported in this new version of Items Flow and since then Lightning Mods has actually re-uploaded 1.05 with a bunch of fixes included. So if you do have 1.05 installed already and you're running into bugs, it may be worth going back on the Homebrew Store and updating the Items Flow application again. Even though it will say that you're installing the same version, it will be the fixed version from Lightning Mods that have fixed a bunch of issues. And he also says that a official 1.06 release will be made once he's confident that most of the issues are fixed. So once he's basically fixed all of the bugs, we should see a 1.06 update. So far, I've been testing it. It's been working pretty well for me on 11.0, but your mileage may vary. You might want to wait for 1.06 if you are running into bugs. So yeah, and one last thing with items flow. For 5.05 and 9.00, Lightning Mods has also released an Items Flow Launcher Payload that includes Gold Hen 2.4 Beta 17.3, the latest version of Gold Hen. So, so on 9.00 or 5.05, instead of loading Gold Hen, you can load the Items Flow Launcher Payload, which will load Gold Hen anyway, but it'll also automatically launch you into Items Flow. So that's another thing that has also been released. So just wanted to make this quick video going over a couple of those updates, the PlayStation Portal POC being released, and of course the new version of Items Flow allowing for the installation of retail game updates. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.